Hey y'all, guess what? Guess what today is? It's the first day of my vlog! <laughs> As I'm sure you've guessed from the title, my name's Q. Hey, how y'all doing? And this is my poker vlog. Yay! So do you have a one thing that you could do every day, all day? And then when you finish it, you still thinking about it? Or when you're gonna do it the next time? For me, it's poker. I love poker. I, I love it so much. And it's such a great sport. I, I'm not a pro. I don't consider myself a pro at all, but maybe I will be one day. I play cash games mostly. I learned how to play back in the day at the Mirage. They used to have these single table sit and goes. So I would go there and I would just play and play to my little heart's content, sit at the table, see a lot of hands. And to the point where I started like winning them, I started doing pretty well. And I was like proud of myself. And it built my confidence because sometimes being in a casino can be a little bit um, intimidating at that stage. And then at that time, my friend Carol was having these games at her house every Tuesday night. We all worked together at Fox and all the cool Fox people, we would get together at Carol's house on Tuesdays and play and drink and talk about cards and play a single table, uh, kind of sit and go as well. And I got a chance to really learn so much because we would talk through things and I could understand why people were doing the things that they were doing or how they understood how I was doing what I was doing. And around the same time, this movie came out, it's called The Bucket List. Have y'all seen that movie? With um, Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson. It's a really good movie if you haven't seen it. And so I, I made my own bucket list. And guess what I put on my bucket list? To be the first woman to win the World Series. I know, it's a lofty goal, but you know, you gotta start somewhere, right? So that was me, that's where I started. And time goes on and I'm really just still playing cash. I'm playing a lot of cash games, I'm playing like private games. Um, it's so fun and easy to be able to just get up and go. If you're doing really well, you could make a run and then make a run for it. <laughs> Whereas with tournaments, you have to be so disciplined. Like I admire tournament players so much because you guys, it requires a lot of discipline, a lot of consistency, right? I didn't know if I had all that yet. So, Carol, I see her, and she's like, so cute. What's up with your bucket list? <laughs> I'm like, I kind of started her off like, more tequila, distraction, squirrel, whatever. And <laughs> normally that would work on Carol, but this time Carol was like, no, I asked you a question. How are you gonna win if you don't play? She's right, like how, how, how can I accomplish my goal if I ain't even in the game? Y'all know how that is. What is up with this piece of hair? Yo. So, the end of 2018, I was like, you know what, Carol, you're right. I shifted my focus, I shifted my game, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna play more tournaments. So between July and December of 2018, I played five tournaments. And look, I made it to the final table in two of them. It was, it was like Carol and the poker gods were talking to me like, see, I told you so. See, I told you so. So Carol and the poker gods, you guys are right. And it was such a validation and such a, like a confirmation, like, hey, you're on the right path. Keep going, keep going. So here I am. I'm going. Let's go. Here I am on the journey to my bucket list. And I thought, well, why not bring some strangers along for the ride? Should be fun, y'all. I do consider myself a seasoned player. At the same time, poker is an ever-evolving sport. And that's one of the things that I love about it so much. So I, I have a lot to learn. I'm excited to see more about my game and how far I can take this. But I really want this vlog to be about my journey to the World Series of Poker um, for 2019. We can just, let's start there, see how it goes. I don't know if I'm going to play the main event this year, but you never know. I mean, I mean, you never know. We're just gonna have to see. I also want to cover a lot of hand histories. I really love seeing those um, when other people review them. And because it's called P's and Q's, I think it only makes sense if we throw in some P's and Q's, some good poker etiquette for those of you who are 
just getting started and even some of you guys who've been playing for a minute and act like you don't know the rules <laughs> be on the lookout i appreciate you guys for joining me on this journey let's do this all right so tonight i'm playing a private game at a members only club called the grand havana room in beverly hills i actually have never been there and i don't know anybody in this game except for my friend who invited me so this will be fun it'll be all new new players so i'll be learning their game and they'll be trying to figure mine out if they can <laughs> it's a 1k buy-in and the blinds are 510 so wish me luck I'm supposed to say just the name of the number you're meeting. Let's go ahead and get into some hands because you know what? Oh yeah, music to my ears. It's like my second hand and I wake up with pocket queens in the big blind. And before I can do anything, the middle position player has already made it 60 to go. There are three callers behind me and you know, I'm thinking, Let's pop it up to 225. The original razor calls. The cutoff goes ahead and makes the call. The dealer and the small blind fold. Here we go to the flop, which is six, seven, ten, rainbow. The middle position player and the cutoff check to me. And I'm not playing around here. Let's just make it 375. It's about half the pot. And the original razor folds. Player in the cutoff thinks for a second and folds. Yay! Nice welcome. Okay, so I've been patient for a while and I'm ready for a hand. I'm ready to see something beautiful. I look down and it's pretty. Ace, king of spades. Okay. We got one player ahead who limps, another player folds, and I raise it to 45. It folds all the way around to the big blind who makes the call, and we go heads up to the flop, which is ace, six, seven of diamonds. All diamonds. Now I wanna warn you that this is not a love story. This is not a victory story. This is an epic Warning. fail because you know what I saw Warning. on that board? I saw the ace and the six and the seven, but I didn't see three diamonds. I saw two diamonds and a heart. So when the big blind makes it $50, what did I do? You wanna guess what I did? I made a min raise to $100 with my top pair. I know it's just a min raise. Wasn't gonna scare anybody, but I'm thinking I'm gonna get some value out of this and see what happens on the turn just in case. Right before the turn comes out, she says, I've got the King of Diamonds, and then the King of Diamonds shows up. So you know what? I'm like, so do I. We both have the King of Diamonds, and I have two pair. But I still don't really see that those were four diamonds. So after the big blind checks, what do I do? I bet. $150, of course she's calling. So we go down to the river, which I'm thinking, don't be a diamond. <laughs> and it's the four of diamonds. And real sweet, we check it through and I flip over my two pair and say, you got me on the river. To which she replies, the river? I got you on the turn. And I look and I'm like, those are all diamonds. Diamonds were not a girl's best friend today. Not today. Ugh. On another hand, I'm on the button and decide to straddle for $30. Look down at nine, six, off. There are four callers and I'm not super excited about the nine, six. So I go ahead and check and we go to the flop, which happens to be six, eight, nine with two spades. The big blind player makes it 75 to go. 
There's a player in middle position who thinks for a second but decides to call the 75. And the hijack also calls the 75, leaving it to me on the button. And I really want to isolate any really great hands and I want to push out any potential draws. So I raise to 300. The original raiser folds, the middle positioning player calls, and the hijack also folds. And we go to the turn, which is the king of diamonds. And the middle position player, Insta, shoves all in. And I'm like, what? But my two pair, I'm feeling like it's good. I don't think they hit that draw with the king. There's definitely not pocket king, so I call. We go to the river, which is another king of spades. Now I'm nervous, so I just show my, my two pair. Takes a look at it, and I win. In hindsight, I don't know if that was really a great decision. Um, there was a lot of draws out there. The board was super wet, and that could have ended badly if they were on that spade draw, or even if, um, even if she had a king, I would have lost on the river not that I could predict that but ended up good for me this time but not sure it was the best decision P's and Q's so today's P and Q is about capping your cards and what that means is when you get your whole cards which are the two cards that you get to play that you get to see it's really important that you cap your cards I use my ladybug card protector Thanks, ladybug. it's good luck and it's beautiful. <laughs> um, everyone uses different things. Some people use their own chips. It's for protection. It's really important. So if you don't cap your cards, um, you could be at risk of the dealer mucking your hand. And, and actually, actually that has happened to me. I was sitting right to the dealer. So if you're in seat one or seat nine and you know, the dealer doesn't know that you want to continue with your hand and they muck your hand and they're right there and their little hands move so fast and they just swoop your hand, put it in the muck. I don't care if you have a nuts you are done you're folded and so it's really important that you cap your cards or if someone's mucking their cards and they hit your cards and your cards aren't capped I mean it could be a whole mess and it's it's the worst feeling in the world especially when you really do have a good hand so always keep your cards that's your P and Q from Q all right back to the felt I'm in the big blind and look down at 10-7 off suit and flat the button straddle of $30. The middle position player also flats and we go three players to the flop, which is eight, nine, queen with two clubs. Now I've got an open-ended straight draw. I feel good about it, but there's also a higher straight out there already. I go ahead and check to the middle position player who bets $60. The button calls the 60 and I go ahead and flat with my eight outs and 31% chance of hitting this hand. The turn comes out as the six of clubs. So we've got a made hand, but now there's a flush out there and there was already a higher straight. So I check again to the middle position player who bets $85 into a $275 pot. The button flats the 85 and it feels a little fishy. So I just flat and see what's gonna happen on the river, which is the eight of diamonds. So now there's also a boat out there. I lead out with 200 because I want to control the pot and I also want to see what's happening with these other players. The middle position player just flats and now I know I'm good. The button folds and I feel really good about showing him my straight and he's like, gosh, I knew you had that straight. I just look over and smile. Whew. Well, that was fun. That was really fun i'm so glad i went thanks em thanks for inviting me super cool people i'm telling you like so cool and i did pretty good y'all um it's one thing to be good but it's another thing to run good <laughs> and i ran great i made some good plays i made some good decisions i also made some like epic super green rookie mistakes but at least they didn't cost me too much and I made up for it with my good decisions. So 
bought in at 1,000 and cashed out at 4,375. So, burning bread, burning half bread. It was a fun night. I would definitely go back, definitely do it again. Um, I have a, a game, a tournament game coming up this weekend. So this was really good just to warm up and get myself back in the swing, in the saddle, all that kind of stuff. I haven't played for about a month. So that's not gonna happen coming up here. We're gonna see about that. I'm on a strict schedule. I'm on a regimen. <laughs> all right, see you guys soon. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram at P's and Q's Poker. I'd love to hear from you. See you next time.